part three. Oh, does Marie mine? Let's see what happens. He went over to it and leaned down. It was a diver's dry suit and it looked brand new. Alex walked back to the water's edge and examined it with a torch. This time he saw something else. A rope had been tied to a rock. It slanted diagonally into the water and disappeared. Alex knew what it meant. Ian Ryder had swum through the submerged tunnel. He had worn a dry suit and he had managed to fix a rope to guide him back through. Obviously, he had planned to come back. That was why he had left the padlock open. It seemed that once again, Alex had been helped by the dead man. The question was, did he have the nerve to go on? He picked up the dry suit. It was too big for him, although it would probably keep out the worst of the chill. But the cold wasn't the only problem. The tunnel might run for 10 metres. It might run for a hundred. How could he be sure that Ian Ryder hadn't used scuba equipment to swim through? If Alex went down there into the water and ran out of breath halfway, he would drown. Pinned underneath the rock in freezing blackness, he couldn't imagine a worse way to die. But he had come so far and according to the map, he was nearly then. Alex swore. This was not fun. At that moment, he wished he had never heard of Alan Blunt. Sail Enterprises or the Stormbreaker. But he couldn't go back. If his uncle had done it, so could he. Gritting his teeth, he pulled on the dry suit. It was cold, clammy and uncomfortable. He zipped it up. He hadn't taken off his ordinary clothes and perhaps that helped. The suit was loose in places, but he was sure it would keep the water out. Moving quickly now, afraid that if he hesitated he would change his mind, Alex approached the water's edge. He reached out and took the rope in one hand. It would be faster swimming with both hands, but he didn't dare risk it. Getting lost in the underwater tunnel would be as bad as running out of air. The result would be exactly the same. He had to keep hold of the rope to allow it to guide him through. Alex took several deep breaths, hyperventilating and oxygenating his blood, knowing it would give him a few precious extra seconds. Then he plunged in. The cold was ferocious. A hammer blow that nearly forced the air out of his lungs. The water pounded at his head, swirling round his nose and eyes. His fingers were instantly numb. His whole system felt the shock, but the dry suit was holding, sealing in at least some of the body warmth. Clinging to the rope, he kicked forward. He had committed himself. There could be no going back. Pull, kick, pull, kick. Alex had been underwater for less than a minute, but already his lungs were feeling the strain. The roof of the tunnel was scraping his shoulders and he was afraid that it would tear through the dry suit and gouge his skin as well. But he didn't dare slow down. The freezing cold was sucking the strength out of him. Pull and kick. Pull and kick. How long had he been underwater? 90 seconds? A hundred? His eyes were tight shut, but if he opened them, there would be no difference. He was in a black, swirling, freezing version of hell and his breath was running out. He pulled himself forward along the rope, burning the skin off the palms of his hands. He must have been swimming for almost two minutes. It felt closer to ten. He had to open his mouth and breathe, even if it was water that would rush into his throat. A silent scream exploded inside him. Pull, kick, pull, kick. And then the rope tilted upwards, and he felt his shoulders come clear, and his mouth was wrenched open and a great, great gasp as he breathed air and knew that he had made it, perhaps with only seconds to spare. But made it to where? Alex couldn't see anything. He was floating in utter darkness, unable to see even where the water ended. He had left the torch at the other side, but he knew that even if he wanted to, he didn't have the strength to go back. He had followed the trail left by a dead man. It was only now that he realised it might lead on only to the grave. There's a good stopping point today and you're not going to be happy, but that's us until Monday. Where has he got to? Will it lead him to, to the um, room underneath the Cell Enterprises in the Dosemary Mine? Or will it be the end for Alex? Have a fantastic weekend. You've worked so hard this week. I know it's not going to be full of an abundance of opportunities, but get some air if it's good. Don't spend all day on the PlayStation. Read other books. Do your group reading online. 
chat to mum and dad, just fill the time with fruitful exercises. I bet you're already bored of the PlayStation. I bet you are. All the Xbox, whatever you kids are playing these days. Have a super weekend. I'll tune in with you Monday for Mr. Cole's morning message. And I'll hear all about your weekends then. Take care of yourselves. Look after your parents. Look after your siblings. Take care of everyone. Bye-bye.